Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So you already know what this video is about because it's in the title of the video. And yes, it is true. I have applied to join the British Army in what is known as the Army Reserves. Now, if you don't know what the Army Reserves is, it's basically being a soldier part-time as opposed to being a soldier full-time. Even though you will be a soldier part-time, you're still expected to perform of the qualities of the soldier that does it full-time. So what is it that I've applied to do then? Well, I've applied to join the infantry. Now, the infantry is basically a front-line uh, unit that fights on the battlefield. So yes, it is a front-line position. And it looks like that I'm going to be trained up on uh, mortar systems. And, you know, yeah, it, it looks quite cool. I've done my research into mortars. And did you know that a mortar can actually do three things? It can, one, shoot high explosives. And when they land, they have a killing range of about... 40 meters anything above that or to 125 is probably gonna you know really hurt someone but it may not kill them so yeah mortars can have uh take high explosives they can also illuminate the nighttime sky so basically a mortar would fire this uh ammunition which i believe it's a white phosphorus or something like that that would come out Open up in the sky on the power chute, illuminate the battlefield, you know, so everybody on the battlefield could see the enemy. And the last thing that a mortar can do is that it can fire smoke screens. So if you've ever seen, you know, like uh, the United States of America when they're training with, uh, with South Korea in amphibious boat landings, then they'll use a thing called a smoke screen. Well, think about the tank. Have you ever seen a tank giving off smoke? Well, that's, that's the third thing that a mortar can do. It also can, you know, produce smoke screens. And the interesting thing what I found out is that the one that actually illuminates the sky, the white phosphorus or something like that, that can actually hurt people too. Because if you get this white phosphorus on you, you know, it's going to burn. So... That's something I've learned. So yeah, getting back to it. So how did the how how have I got about to applying to the British Army in the first place? Well, as you know, you guys who follow my Fox Recon videos, you know that I like the outdoors. You, you know I like the cooking aspect, the camping aspect. You know the wilderness aspect. But what I don't like about it is the civilian life aspect. So what do I mean about that? Well, I mean, I don't like seeing dog walkers in the morning. You know what I mean? You're out, you're camping, you're having a good time, you know. You're in your military fatigues because, hey, that's what we are. We're like preppers, aren't we? We're wild campers. We like to wear, you know, our military fatigue every now and again. We like our MTP colours and stuff like that. But what we don't like is when we see the dog walker in the morning having a nose here at what we're doing. Yeah, we understand, you know, they may be interested by what we're doing, but nonetheless, dog walk walkers just don't get it, okay? So that's one of the aspects why I want to get in the British Army because of the simple fact whenever we're doing exercises or something like that, I'm going to be in the field and you know and I know there's going to be no dog walkers in the field. It's like I said to the sergeant tonight, when I attend Catterick for my combat infantry training, I uh, the CIC, I forget what it's called now, but when I attend the Catholic training, I said to my sergeant today, you know, I will be the happiest man in that field because there'll be no dog walkers there. You know, you, you, you're not going to have dog walkers on MOD property. So, like, as strange as it sounds, that's one of the reasons. Now, another reason why I've applied with the British Army is my fitness level. Now, you guys who's been following my channel, and again, thank you, you know, for your support and stuff. But you know, you know that over the course of time, I injured my shoulder. I got a rotatory cuff injury from when I was hiking, wild camping. 
And not only that, only last year, towards the end of the year, I actually broke my leg. You remember that? And I'd been in a plaster and an air cast boot for like 14 weeks, maybe 16 weeks. So another aspect of it is I want to get the physio and the physical activities back up. Because another, another reason is I've been working, you know, from home for the last seven years. I've been behind a camera, I've been behind a computer, and now my body's just saying I need to get out and I need to do something different with my life. I need that physical exercise, I need to be on my feet. I don't want to be sat down no more. So that's another reason why I've applied to the British Army and you know obviously the infantry being on their feet all the time and stuff like that then that's really what I want to go for because it's the physical fitness side of stuff. So how did my first meeting go today with the colour sergeant and the sergeant? It went fantastic guys. I basically, let me just get a drink please. I basically turned up at the barracks and I was led into the room where I seen the colour sergeant. Now, because I've been in army cadets when I was younger, you know, you're talking when I was about, I don't know, 14, 15, 16 or something like that. But because I was in army cadets, every time you you walked into a, a room and you seen someone behind the desk, you automatically done a foot thing and then you salute it. So as soon as I went in and I turned around the corner and I seen the colour sergeant behind his desk, automatically, instincts just wanted to salute him. I don't know why it is, but that's something that's probably been drilled in my head ever since the army cadets. So being younger, so from that word go, I actually felt pretty relaxed. And then when the colour sergeant was explaining, you know, what would happen and everything that's going to be happening, you know, I, I find myself being a little bit featured there. You do, don't you? When you're in the new surroundings and uh, you know, yeah, you, you know what I mean, you, you just feed to the boy, so I find myself doing that, but the more and more I got into the interview and looking around and realising that I'm actually in the British Army barracks, the more I started to relax, you know, the more I under understood that's why I want to be there. So, once he explained about, you know, I would have my drill nights and then when, when, when I go away to Catterick, which is in Yorkshire, I will be, the first night will basically be, hello, welcome to, you know, Catterick, blah, blah, blah. They'll update you, tell you the plan of action, stuff like that. And then after that, it's going to be like, you know, you'll probably, I don't know, do you have supper? I, I, I don't know, but I'm going to make sure I'm going to eat before I go. But they'll switch the lights off so everybody will get an early night. And then in the morning, we will have further, you know, stuff, learning more about the British Army. It would probably be paperwork, you know, just, just stuff that's non-physical. It'd be basically non-physical stuff. And then on the third day, that will be, you know, like the physical side of stuff. And yeah, guys, I'm just really excited about it again because this is something my body needs. I need to get back into physical fitness. I need to bring my body back to a very good standards of fitness because I'm 37 years old now. Now, another thing the colour soldiers started talking about was their terms and conditions, you know, about what's expected expected of you as a soldier. And, oh yeah, that's all the stuff that you'll be asked in Catterick. You'll have an interview in Catterick and you will be asked about the regiment it is that you're joining. In my case, it's going to be the mercenary uh, mercenary regiment and they'll be asking you about the history of it and what you know and stuff like that so that's other stuff i need to look into and research but that was one of the things that came up now one of the things about the terms and conditions which the color sergeant was saying was basically like if you're called to uh basically go away to war or you 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 have you've got to go away onto deployment how how do you feel about that and my response was is like you know i'm 37 years old now and yeah i've, I've experienced civilian life civilian life is 
it's, it's, it's not fantastic, really, is it? Civilian life, if you think about it. You know, we practically... With, with civilian life, everybody wants, to, wants you to be domesticated. So what I mean about that? Well, the way civilian life is, is that uh, gas companies, gas companies want you to wait for that letter when they send you a letter saying, oh, we're increasing the price of gas next month or you know the electricity company be like oh we're increasing the price of electricity and you know it's just these little stupid things that domesticate it give you another example so as you guys probably know i'm from northern ireland now if you go to northern ireland let's say uh derry london derry wherever you want to call it you go over there you'll find the tesco's you go to stockport just down there in portwood you'll find the tesco's so that's what I mean about civilian life. Civilian life is very domesticated and, you know, everything is a service. You know, pass me the salt, can you pass me the salt, pass me the vinegar. Oh yeah, that's the service, we want £2.50 for that. You know what I mean? So civilian life is very greedy, there's no loyalty about it and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I really need to be in the military environment because when I grew up in Northern Ireland, I grew up with soldiers. I grew up with the British Army and the British Army has always been my heroes. So to say, you know, I'm going to go for it, I'm going <coughs> to follow my heroes is quite an achievement for me. So yeah, you know, coming back to what's going to happen with this channel, the Fox Recon videos are still going to be coming, you know, stuff that. In the, in the next Fox Recon video, we're going to be doing a review of the USA mess kit versus the British Army mess kit. Now, I'm not too sure if that's going to be the correct title or should it be comparison between the US mess kit and the British Army mess kit. I'm not too sure, so we're going to be doing that, but I've got both mess kits, I'm testing them out, I know what I like and I don't like about them, so we'll run a comparison video on that. Now, another thing I did say to these guys is uh, that I'm a photographer. Now, you guys know I, I take, you know, selfies, and, you know, I've got, I've got a major love for the Royal Irish Regiment major love for them because they used to be the Ulster, Ulster Defence Regiment and the Royal Irish Rangers so yeah I've got a mad love for them and as you know I'm working on a Royal Irish project now so today at the uh, barracks I basically said to the co colour sergeant and to the sergeant that I would like to you know be a photographer and have uh, just a wide spread photography aspect role in the British Army too in the reserves and it's a little bit more complicated because the answer I got in return is like if I take photos then you know it needs to go through a system of command I just can't take a photo and then publish it on Facebook or stuff like that instead I've got to take the photos get people to sign permission to publish them then it goes to someone else then it goes to someone higher and then they so, so there's a process it's it's not a straightforward process to be a photographer within the British Army by the looks of it. And I don't blame them, you know, you've got the security aspects and stuff like that. But again, you know, <coughs> yeah, guys, you know, I'm, I'm joining the British Army and hopefully, hopefully in the next few months, I'm going to come out as a fully trained soldier, infantryman. So guys, yeah, stay tuned and I'll update you. I am just, fingers crossed. So yeah, guys, fingers crossed and... Thanks for watching this video. See you all soon.